Produced by Mali. There's not really much more I can add in terms of heating a uh, fish room because these are the only options for a lot of us. I mean, you can either heat the room or you can heat the tank. So, so you have two options basically. So you got to decide which way you want to go and then go from there and just be safe whatever the way you decide to do, especially if you decide to heat individual tanks. When you do get to about 10 plus, you are running the risk of uh, electrical failures as well as fires. So that's something to really pay attention to. Don't plug more than like three or four uh, units into one heating outlet or one one plug or one you know, power strip because they do generate heat on the wires and stuff too and uh, they can melt your power strips and stuff and they can cause electrical fire so pay attention to that and uh, stay safe and happy fish keeping what is going on world welcome back to Malik's water garden today's video is going to be fun because I'm going to be talking about how I heat my fish room and why I decide to heat it the way I heat it I have about 50 tanks in this room, I actually just counted, and I have 49 tanks above 5 gallons. And about 30 of them have fish in it, and about 45 of them have water in it. And there's about two, there's two tanks outside that are larger. Everything in here is about under 40 gallons, except the 155, which is on the other side. Um, the entire room is set up like a river, and um, basically the way I envisioned it when I redid the room uh, two years ago, or at some point, I think last year, I think, was it last year or two years ago? I can't even remember, it's been a while. Uh, when I redid the room, I, my in original vision was to make it look like a river. So when I walk in, I walk in the door is over here and uh, it just winds through the room. It's a 600 square foot room, it's my living room. Uh, I live in a 1200 square foot apartment and 600 square feet of that, which is essentially half, is dedicated to this fish room. And this is a thermal controlled room and uh, I basically are, I'm only in here to work on the tanks I don't actually live in this part of the house and uh, I essentially spend a lot of time in here working but I'm not wearing a lot of clothes so now you know that, but right now I'm actually dealing with an active ick outbreak in the tank here if you haven't checked out yesterday's video I highly recommend checking that out I'll put a link to it up here as well as at the end of this video so you can check that out uh, there's also updates coming up about that and uh, I also don't think it's the, the, the normal type of ick because it's actually acting completely differently. This tank over here where my new zebra placos are, there's five of them that uh, went through the same thing. And uh, they are doing better now and they don't actually have an outbreak. The temperature in there was about 87 degrees for the last three weeks. And the week before that, when they had the ick outbreak, the temperature in there was about 91 degrees Fahrenheit. But through this entire time, they still retained some of the ick which is not normal for the type of ick that we are used to dealing with. And above 86 degrees, ick should be dead. But even at 87 degrees, they've actually managed to pass it on to my L134 that I moved in there yesterday as a test fish. Now, he is showing a little bit of signs of discomfort, but I don't think he's going to have an active outbreak because of the temperature. But I do have to treat that tank. So we'll be looking at that in the upcoming video. So subscribe down below and stay tuned for that as well as the fish room too because... I'm going to be showing this entire room walking through once this is all done, so stay tuned for both those updates as well as many others. Now having said that, I heat the entire room. I don't actually pay for water or heat. I live in an apartment and uh, water as well as hot water and heat is all included in my rent. So for me, it's economical to heat the entire room and also I only have 15 amps of electricity dedicated to this entire room. This is an all old apartment. So it was built in the 60s and they retrofitted the apartment back with some new heater which is a central heating unit that's actually in this room mostly. The controller as well as all the outlets except one outlet which is in my other room uh, which I've actually asked them to put in for me. Uh, so I can control the temperature throughout the house. Basically they can be two separate zones of uh, temperature. In the winter I don't actually you know, turn, turn off anything. I just keep everything on and keep the house quite warm. This part stays at about 85 degrees Fahrenheit in the winter. It's quite comfortable actually in the winter because the floor gets cold and stuff. When it's minus 40 degrees outside Celsius, which is about minus 20 degrees or below that uh, Fahrenheit, uh, and uh, you walk in after working in that and uh, it's quite comfortable. I and mean, it does get quite cold here now. Uh, last few winters there was a few weeks where the, the temperature dropped below minus 20. Um, overnight for several days at a time and uh, there was days that the temperature was below minus 40 degrees Celsius which is about minus 20 degrees Fahrenheit or below and uh, it's quite warm, cold so in that times it's quite comfortable to have this room warm and it radiates heat and uh, it 
warms up the rest of the house and uh, it, it feels really nice being in here. But right now, because it's still fall and it's quite warm and the floors are warm and everything else, these things are radiating heat right now. These tanks are at about 87 degrees Fahrenheit right now, all my tanks up here in this part of the room. And uh, so I'm using the central air to heat up the entire room to 86 degrees Fahrenheit. And I don't actually have any heaters plugged in except for the one heater that's plugged in to the tank that has the active ick outbreak. Now, the reason I'm not using 50 heaters is, one, because it's going to cost me, even if they're 100 watt heaters, that's 5,000 watts of electricity in the dead of winter when it gets cold, and all the heaters will turn on. I've actually had about 20 tanks in here in the past before I switched to heating up the entire room, and about 20 tanks in the past, uh, when I first moved in for the first few years, had heaters in them. And uh, in the winter, when the heaters would kick in, when it got really cold is when the, all the heaters would kick in because not everything's set to a specific temperature. They all set to different temperatures at that point. Uh, and uh, when all the heaters came in, the power would go off in this room. The circuit would break and I would have to go manually turn off, turn on the circuit and then uh, it would break again unless I've actually turned some stuff up. So I'd had to unplug heaters, I'd had to unplug lights, whatever it was. So it was a little bit of a hassle and it was a fire hazard as well. I've done electrical engineering for education as a part of my education for sound engineering and which is what my primary focus of education is. Through that, I've actually learned a lot about electrical engineering. And because of that, I do understand about amperage, wattage, voltage, and all that stuff, and, and how to not overload my circuit. So once I figured out what was going on, which was the first or second time it happened, and uh, I realized this is what's going on, so I remedied it, and I started heating up the entire room and had to unplug a lot of my heaters and now I'm using LED lights in my fish room so it's not using a lot of electricity um, and my entire fish room is uh, filtered through a central air loop and uh, I'm actually using 87 watts of electricity for my linear piston pump uh, which uses uh, basically 87 watts and uh, it was expensive to set up but it filters all my tanks the next thing I'm going to say is if you are going to use heaters individually for your tanks, uh, it, just make sure you're not going to overload your circuit. Figure out how many amps your circuit can pull. Calculate how many amps your heaters are going to take as well as all your lights. And then figure out if that's going to be more or less than what your circuit can handle. If it's more than what your circuit can handle, your circuit will break or cause a fire. So you have to really pay attention to that type of stuff and uh, really get on top of that. The second thing I'm going to say is if you do decide to heat up the room, uh, heating up with a central air loop might be a little bit more costly for a lot of you guys so I highly recommend getting one of these guys which is like a electrical heater this is 1500 watts so 1500 watts and I use this in the middle of winter when it gets really cold and my my central air system cannot heat up the room to 85 degrees it can only handle when it, when it gets to about minus 40 outside it can get the temperature in the room to about 79 degrees Fahrenheit and uh, it basically stops beyond that, you can't heat up the room. So then the tanks will drop uh, up here to about 78, 77 and the rest of the room will, will drop accordingly. Now at that point, or be well before that actually, I actually plug this in, which is my electrical heater. And I really like this unit because it has an on off switch back here. If the heater falls accidentally, uh, it turns off. So if it falls on its face or its back, it turns off. So it's really good. I really like that about this particular unit. and. Uh, the only thing I would say is you can't keep it near anything that's like a fabric or anything, but you can have it next to tanks, you can have it directly at tanks. Uh, it does heat up a tank if you have the, the air, like if you have it this close and the heat is blowing like this, it will heat up the tank a few degrees. If you move it a few feet back, you know, it doesn't really affect the temperature of the tank. Uh, the heat does rise. It's essentially to heat up the entire room. And uh, so this helps bring up the temperature up to 85 degrees Fahrenheit. Now if you do decide to use an uh, oil heater, I would recommend not to and to go with electric, especially if your fish room is in your house and you have, uh, it's, you know, like it shares air and stuff just because there's a lot of things that could go wrong with oil heaters um, and you know it could cause like fumes, carbon monoxide or stuff like that and you don't want that in your house. So this is, uh, my personal recommendation is electric. Uh, I really like this. Uh, you can buy various different kinds. This is actually, I don't even know what brand it is. My mom bought this for me when I first moved in here. Uh, and uh, essentially, it's, I've had this for over 10 years and it's worked great. And I only plug it in like maybe a few weeks out of a year uh, for, for short periods of time when it gets really cold. So the rest of the time, my house heater can hold 
the temperature in here to about 84, 85 degrees Fahrenheit, whatever I decide to keep it at. And that keeps the tanks at about 84 degrees uh, on the top level up here. And uh, if I have power heads plugged in, it brings it about a little bit higher. So I had to play with that a little bit. Every year is a little bit of a challenge. Uh, when I first turned the heaters on, I had to play with all the power heads and stuff and make sure that each fish is uh, in a tank where the temperature is ideal for that fish. Now having said that, there are tanks in my fish room where the temperature does drop to about 72 degrees Fahrenheit in the winter, which is on the outside parameter of the fish room on the bottom rows. And uh, so it's like a river and it goes through, right? So like, as I'm walking through, as I go further away from the central heating uh, console, the tanks on the further side of the room does get cold on the bottom row. The top row does stay warm, especially in the back over there, I don't know how, but I guess the heater does pump a lot of hot air back there. And uh, so the, the top tanks do stay at about 82 degrees Fahrenheit if it's 85 degrees in the air. Uh, and uh, everything else drops to about 72 degrees on the bottom row. Now those tanks I actively breed cold water requiring fish in the winter. And uh, I try to keep things that do require seasonal change in those tanks throughout the winter months by moving all the other fish like plankos and discus and stuff into the central part of the room or the top tanks out there. And uh, that's how I actually keep my entire fish room warm. Uh, if you guys have any questions, please comment below and let me know because I would love to see what everybody does, especially people that have fish rooms or multiple tanks. Thank you so much for watching the video till the end. You guys are all awesome. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe down below. Hit that notification icon so you get updated when these type of videos as well as many videos like this get uploaded. As always, thank you so much for your support. I love you all. I'll see you on the next video. God bless you all.